You are welcome to the end time revival heartbreak. Let us revive the world together. Hero. Associated with the Christian people on the campus and at the Bible study, you know, they will say this is not possible, that is not possible. Then I will say, for what I've read, this is possible. And when they couldn't handle me in the uh, little uh, Christian community there, that is the Bible study, then they took me to the chapel and I was this professor of religion. And this professor of religion at the university there, they called him to the particular study that night because they felt that all these other students could not handle me in our Bible study class because at all the time they say without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. If, they, if we drag it here and drag it here and drag it there, I will end up by saying without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. They will say, well, what if a person does this and this and after giving all the arguments and all the examples, I will end up by saying without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Then they felt it's difficult for fellow students to handle this man. Therefore, they call this uh, professor, you know, with a lot of degrees, head of department of religion and culture. And uh, he came that day and they uh, were sharing the word of God. And of course, they made sure that they introduced uh, the people so that, so as not to suddenly notice that uh, I was now in, in that uh, circle. And he said, this is Professor so-and-so. You see the light is not dead yet. Uh, it's still over there. They said, this Professor so-and-so. And this is so-and-so. And they also, they brought other students that were studying religion. And some of them had moustache and some of them had beard. Uh, just to be a little bit wild. And then they said, this is so and so, and this is so and so. And uh, so I kept quiet and we started the Bible study the way we used to do. And then they started saying, you know, once you are saved, you are saved forever. You may smoke, you may drink, you may commit adultery, you may commit fornication. God loves you so much that once you are saved, you are saved forever. And in fact, nobody can live a holy life. And you see, when I, in any group that I was, I couldn't bear that kind of thing. No matter what, and our own Bible study was much longer than all the others because you know, in all the other groups and at the various halls, whenever they said anything, they just said yes, yes, they were the yes men. I was never a yes man, and so immediately they said that, and I just uh, spoke out and said, No, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. And uh, so Paul uh, now spoke out in that heavy, matured old age voice and said young man according to zechariah's according to church history and he began to quote authors he said it's not author it's what jesus christ said be therefore perfect as your father which is in heaven is perfect beside that those authorities know more than jesus then they become our savior or jesus knows more than them and then Jesus will say, Savior, that I will stay with Jesus. If perfection were not possible, if holiness were not possible, if purity of heart were not possible, Jesus Christ was the economist of words. He will never say those words because he never used any redundant word. He never said anything that shouldn't have been said. And then that day, if the professor quoted his own and quoted his authority, but I went back to my authority, the word of God. Established from everlasting to everlasting. And the professors and colleges and universities and deans and all those people may change, our God remains ever the same. And so I came out of the university, it was like I was a lone ranger. And it was like nobody would ever listen to me. And it was like, you know, this was an impossible task that I had. And so when I came to the University of Lagos in uh, 1972, uh, the Christian Union there had heard about me. They didn't know I was a troubleshooter, a troublemaker. Uh, but they thought, uh, you know, I was just a quiet, nice man that will come and give them a, you know, kind of message at the Christian Union. Uh, so they called me and they gave me a subject they shouldn't have given me. They gave me the subject I'll be talking about tomorrow, which is the Christian and the world. And when I got that uh, paper they wrote to me from Unilag, and they said, this is what I'll be talking about, I knew that we were in for another deal. And so I went into the Word of God, and I came over there, and when I came, that was May 1972. And I delivered the message. For them, it was too hard for them to know 
that whosoever is born of God does not commit sin because the seed of God remains in him and he cannot sin because he's born of God. In this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. He that doeth righteousness is of God because Christ abides in him. It is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Immediately I finished like this. Somebody just left the congregation and took over the microphone and said, Everybody see now we have not finished yet. We do not accept that. Open confrontation. And then he started preaching his own and you know the people were here and there and you know they pulled him up there they said let the old man let the man go uh, because nobody accepts what he has said and so they quietly everything down and then he and some other people came to me after that meeting and said this thing you have said is impossible how can a person live without sin and that a person should not be of the world and i quoted the bible to them but no they will not accept and then God so what did it was that same year 1972 I went to do my postgraduate at the University of Toledo and I had made up my mind that I will not have anything to do with that kind of group because I remember 1964 to 1967 it was always argument always you know dragging this and tearing this apart and I didn't want that anymore uh, but then when I came in, in September 1972, here came the president of the Christian Union then, and he said that, uh, well, we still remember the experience we had in May, uh, but we hope that you will not abandon us. And I said, you know, uh, a person like me is not a person you want in your fellowship, because I'm a student of the Bible, and I'm a student of John Wesley, and a student of Charles G. Finney, and I read those Puritans and those people that emphasize holiness because the only single thing in life that matters is to have the grace of God so fill you and so saturate you that you will live like Enoch, like you will live like Samuel, live like Daniel, who proposed in his heart. He will not defile himself with the meat of the king, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that said, No, we will not bow down to your idol. Come what me. I said, I'm like the people of the New Testament, Paul the Apostle wanted to press on that I may be found not in my righteousness but in that righteousness which is of the faith of Jesus Christ to be crucified with him nevertheless to live because it is not I that liveth it is Christ that liveth in me that I'm of those people that will reckon yourself dead indeed unto sin and alive unto righteousness I'm not the kind of person you will want in your fellowship so that I don't disorganize everything for you and he said we still want you all the same and so uh, I was on the edge like that, but again it was a year, a year of a trouble. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And please don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you'll be the first to know when we drop new video. God bless you.